Hey guys, this is the Athletic Gamers, and today we're going to be doing a ping pong paddle review, and we're going to be trying out this um, iPong, Pro, iPong Pro robot. And these are the three paddles we're going to be using. We have. Um, um, well, the first paddle is um, a four star Diodora paddle from Sport Check. The second paddle is a five star Stiga Pro Carbon. And the final paddle is a three-star Stiga Pure Color Advance. And first, we're going to be starting... Okay, up first, uh, we have a right-handed player using the five-star Pro Carbon Paddle uh, with uh, two-star Juga Magic Balls. And um, we have the settings with equal topspin and backspin, no oscillation, and the medium to high frequency. So let's start. That's the forehand with the five star Stiga Pro Carbon Paddle. So now we have a left handed player also using the Stiga Pro Carbon, and he's gonna be hitting backhands now on the same settings that I was using. So, as a left-handed player, the Stiga Pure Pro Carbon, sorry, um, is a really good paddle. Um, it hits really well for how I, how I like to spin when I hit a backhand. Um, it's like really nice to hold for me. I mean, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, it has good control, good speed. I mean, that's really all I can say about it. Um, for me, I was a right-handed player and I was hitting forehands. I found the paddle to be exceptionally good. It had really, really, really high power and um, a very good spin level as well. It takes a little while to get used to it though because it's pretty easy to hit it out with so much power. But after a while, you can really get um, used to it and it's a very good paddle, very easy to move the ball around and very heavy backspin. Okay. Okay, now we have a right-handed player playing with the three-star uh, Stiga Pure Color Advanced with the exact same settings as we had before with the exact same balls we had before, Jula Two-Star Magic. And as I said, equal tops in a backspin, backspin, no oscillation, and medium to high frequency. All right, here we go.
So, pretty good. And once again, we are using the uh, three star Stiga Pure Color Vance. Okay, so now we have our left handed player, and he's playing with the Stiga Pro Color Vance, which is a three star paddle. He's going to be hitting forehands. We're using the same settings and the same balls as before. Okay. Okay, so um, this is our mini review for the Stiga Pure Color Advance, blue color, and um, it's a three-star paddle. So uh, I was the one hitting backhands, I'm the right-handed player, and it was actually pretty nice. It was a little bit harder to get the ball in, because I found it had a very high amount of power and a very high amount of spin, but really not that much control for like really varying like how high and low you can hit it. Back spin was um, much too high, like I couldn't really get it to stick very low, but top spin, overall, really good paddle, very nice at changing direction. I like the brand Stiga. Pretty good overall. Okay, now as the left-handed player, uh, I played forehand with the three uh, three star uh, pure color. St um, and so, um, even though it may not look like it, I really like this because it has a lot of control for me because I miss the table a lot, and um, I like it. It feels good. Um, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, now we have the right-handed player playing with the. Diodora, and uh, it is a four-star rating. We have the same settings as before, equal topspin and backspin, no oscillation, medium to high frequency, and two-star jewel balls. So let's go.
So I'm the left-handed player. I played with the four-star Diodora. It was really, it was a really good paddle. Um, I really liked how much it like spun when I tried to hit it. Um, it was really good for when I hit play my backhand. I like to, as I said, I like to put spin on it and uh, good power. So if uh, someone hits a soft return, I could hit it back. Nice, nice and good. I mean, it's really good, easy to hold, really fun to play with. Okay, and I was the right-handed player, and I was hitting all four hands with this Theodore paddle. I've had this Theodore paddle for a long time now, and I find it's one of the best paddles that I've ever used. I think it's like a really good mix between power control and spin. It's a lot heavier spinning for a lot of these um, cheaper four-star paddles, and it actually has a fair amount of power, and it's very easy to change direction with. Also, um, because of the high amount of spin, it's very easy to get back into a point after being put on the defense by a smash. I like also the backspin capabilities. Serving capabilities are pretty poor with this, unless you like hitting a lot of topspin serves. But um, overall, it's very easy to build a point and win a point very quickly with this Theodore. Next up is our final review. Okay, this is the final review on the three paddles that we used. Just a little recap of what we used. We used the five-star Stiga Pro Carbon, the three-star Stiga Pure Color Advance, and the four-star Diodora. And um, I was the right-handed player, and I was the left-handed player. So um, we'll start off with the Stiga Pro Carbon Paddle. So um, this is my thoughts on the Stiga Pro Carbon Paddle. I'm also going to compare it to these other two. At the end, we're going to pick one for top power. We're going to pick one for top spin. We're going to pick one for top control. We're also giving them a ranking. One is the best, two is the middle, and three as um, the third. We're also going to take into consideration their price points, considering that this one is a five-star, which is probably more expensive than a three-star paddle. So um, what we're going to start with is I'm just going to talk about this one. So I found this paddle was probably one of my favorites. It has the highest power, in my opinion, out of all three of the paddles, probably also the highest spin. But because of these two things, the spin was able to get it, like it was able to get the ball in very well, but it was harder to get it over the net. Also, it had a pretty low control rating until you got used to it because of how high the power is. So I find if you're a hard hitter and you like to win points quickly, this might be the paddle for you. But if you really like to defend, this might be a paddle for you. Even though it has very heavy spin, it's much too easy to hit it out or much too easy to end up hitting it too hard or hitting it in the net. Okay. So I was a left-handed player and this five-star paddle I find is really good. Um, I think that, um, I don't think this has the best spin for my liking. I mean, it's, I feel I don't hit enough spin with than what I want to hit. I mean, it easily has the most power out of all of them when hitting, and probably, I'd say probably second best in control. Um, I mean, I really like this paddle, um, as I said. Um, I can return quite well, but as he said, um, it's a lot harder to um, keep it in because you could easily hit it too hard or hit it too wide because of um, a little bit less control than the others, in my opinion. Okay, now we'll move on to the Stiga Pure Color Advance. So um, this paddle is actually blue, so it's pretty cool. They come in four different colors as well. So um, this is the three-star paddle that we used, but it's very nice for that rating. Again, it does, it's much lighter than I find in the Stiga Pro Carbon. Stiga Pro Carbon is actually a very heavy paddle. Even though it's very light, it still has adequate power for like an average game. You're still going to be able to move your opponent around very well, and you're still going to be able to hit nice winners. It has a very, very good control rating for um, the amount of power that it has. It's pretty easy to get the ball in, as long as you're hitting some top spin. Spin, I didn't find that it hits very much spin, but that was just my personal preference. But when you really get underneath the ball and you come up it, you can hit a very much enough spin on this ball paddle. And it's um, very good for returning smashes as well because of how light it is. It's very easy to get it in front of the, um, in front of the smash to get it back over the net. Uh, this paddle, uh, this is my paddle, and this is the one that I use. I really, really like it because it has just enough power uh, for what I use. I don't hit a lot of power. Um, I don't hit it too powerful when I'm returning or serving. I find it has the best like spin control. Um, so when I when I because I said I hit my uh, returns with a lot of spin, and I find that it's the one that I can control the spin a lot be the best throughout all of these paddles. I feel like that might be just a little bit of bias because this is my paddle and this is the one that I use. But overall, I think this is a really good paddle uh, for a three star. And um, on to the Diodor 4-star paddle. Surprisingly enough, this is actually the cheapest paddle out of these three. It's pretty close in price to the Stiga Pure Color Advance, but um, it's even cheaper than that by, I'd say, about $7 Canadian if you get this on sale. And um, 
full price. Again, it's probably about $30 cheaper, but it's a very, very nice paddle. It's the lightest out of the three, in my opinion. It feels pretty light. It's got um, a lot of weight right here in the middle, but there's not very much up by the head or by the handle. So most of the weight is stored in this block right here, which is kind of weird, but it evens it out pretty well. I find um, it has an extremely well control and it's very easy to keep the ball in with it. It also has fair power, a little bit more in my opinion than the Pure Color and um, a good bit less than this one, the Pro Carbon, but um, a good amount of spin as well. It's pretty easy to get a nice loop on the ball and pretty easy um, to get it up nice and high on your opponent's strokes. So if you're someone who likes to hit lots of spin with good control and even have a fair amount of power, I think this could be a paddle for you. Okay, so this paddle, in my opinion, I'm not a huge fan of this paddle. Um, I mean, it's it's nice to hold. I mean, I find it really nice when it, how it sits in my hand. Um, I find when I hit this, I find it really hard to control. As, it, as he said, it's the lightest paddle out of all of them and is quite fun to play with, even though it's probably my least favorite out of the three. Um, as you can say, my as you can see, my forehands aren't the best. But, I mean, I can still get pretty good control with this. The power, I'd say, um, is pretty good with this. I mean, with this paddle, it's pretty good in my opinion. Uh, it's a really, it's, as I said, it's a really good paddle. Uh, and the spin control, um, like with these, these other two, um, I can control, I can hit really good spin with it and not have it uh, shoot off to the side. Okay, so now we're going to give them rankings on which one we think had the best power. Second best power, third best power. Uh, well, all we have to do is first and second best. And then um, as for spin, we're going to do first, second, third best. And um, control first, second, third best. So um, we'll start with power. In my opinion, I think this paddle had the best power. This paddle probably had the second best power. This paddle probably had the third best power. And that's from a right-handed player. Uh, for the left-handed player, I can't really speak for all left-handed people. But I think the power is the best in this one. I think this one can hit the most power. Uh, the second, I'd say, is the um, Pure Color Advanced. This one has a nice power for me. I don't like to have too much power. And I'd say the worst for power is this one right here because I don't find I can get a lot of power when I hit with this paddle. Okay, um, for control, in my opinion, I think the Diodora actually had the best control. I'm only saying this because I feel that because of how light it is, it's very easy to just block the ball back. I think if you're looking to hit like lots of spin back, you probably want to go for one of these two. But um, the Pro Carbon actually doesn't have bad control, but the problem is, is because it has so much power, even though it has good control, unless you're, if you're trying to hit hard and you're using all that power, it's still very difficult to get the ball to come in unless you really hit over it. Um, so actually in that, I would rank this first, second, and third. If you're a soft hitter and you want to get a nice heavy spin paddle, get this and it'll have great um, control for you. But if you're someone who really likes to hit hard, this paddle is going to allow you to hit even harder than you've ever hit before, but you're not going to have the same control that you would have with a lighter paddle like these two. Um, for control, I think that the best one for me is this one here, surprisingly. Even though it has the lowest star ranking, I think this one has the most control with my spin. As I said, the spin control is the best out of these. Then next up for that is probably the the Pro Carbon. Um, as he said, the um, you can't really have a paddle that has a lot of power and a lot of control because if you have a paddle that has a lot of power behind it, if you smack it like as hard as you can, you can't really, you don't have a lot of control. You just gotta hope to God that it hits the table in the right spot. So that leaves that this one uh, has the least control out of all of them. It, it was a really close one for me between these two for the control, but uh, the Pro Carbon definitely uh, takes second place, in my opinion. Okay, and now we'll move on to spin. So um, as for spin, I'm gonna give um, the Pro Carbon first, in my opinion. I just find that because it's very heavy paddle and it has so much power, you're really able to drop the racket head and like develop so much spin on the ball, because with the speed that you're hitting, you can really jump forward. Um, I'm gonna give um, the Pure Color Advance actually second for spin. Because um, the only reason why it wasn't first for me is because you just can't hit it as fast with the spin because of the speed. But also with the spin, you can't develop as much spin because of the weight and um, the power on it. But uh, as for a paddle, this spins very well. You're able to hit a very nice amount of spin, nice side spin, back spin as well. And um, I'm going to give the Diodor third because uh, it doesn't really have that many layers to it. And truthfully, as for spin, you can just hit standard topspin, standard backspin. 
As for side spin, that's why it's pretty weak for serving. You can't hit very much side spin at all. It's very hard to get the ball to jump to the side, so you can't really hit very many of those nice side spin serves. Um, for spin, my favorite, once again, is kind of biased, but this paddle is the best in spin for me. Because as you could see, when I was hitting the back, and I know a uh, back can, and I know a lot of my close friends know, that I like to, when I'm returning back in, I like to side spin the life out of, the, out of my returns. So this one I feel is the best control, uh, the best spin control uh, for this one. This one here is the best. Um, the next I would say for spin is this one. Um, the spin in this one, I feel I can get a lot of power spin shots, if that makes any sense. Um, I can spin, I can spin the ball really nice with this paddle and get a lot of power as well. Um, but as you know, if you can, if you get under the ball, it kills a lot of the spin or it kills a lot of the power, but you get a lot of spin out of it. So that leaves, um, third for this paddle here. It still gets a lot of spin, but not as much as I really would like a paddle for, uh, a paddle to hit spin for. And now we're going to do our overall recap, and we're going to give a paddle first, we're going to give a paddle second, we're going to give a paddle third, and these are just going to be our opinions. Again, you might try out one of the paddles, you might love it, and you might hit, hate our choice for first, but um, really it depends on what type of game player you are and which way you play. Like even me and Jacob, we both play completely different game styles. Okay, so in my opinion, I personally like the Stika Pro Carbon as my favorite paddle. Again, it doesn't win out in control by a long shot. It would easily lose to this paddle or this paddle in control unless you want to hit it a lot softer. But the reason why I'm picking this is because even though you're losing out in control, I find it's very easy to win points with this paddle because of the heavy, like the heavy spin. You might not hit as much spin, but the spin that you're hitting, it's very easy to get it like to jump forward a lot. And um, you can hit very nice serves with this paddle because of the amount of power, very nice spin serves. So I find it's um, the easy paddle to win points with, which is why I'd pick this as my first. I picked the Pure Color Vance as my second paddle, as my second favorite paddle, because I find that if it's not first in all the categories, it's taking a very um, close second, because I find that it's a very good paddle for taking um, on spin, and it's a very good paddle for overall playing. It takes on spin very well, as I was saying, like you're able to get the spin very early and you're able to hit it in. Serving, very strong as well for side spin serves, very well, to, easy to place it, great for returning smashes because of its nice weight distribution. And um, that gives the to a third. Again, this is a four-star paddle. It's higher star um, than this paddle. But again, it is made by Diodora, which really isn't a table tennis brand company. So um, I guess they decided they wanted to go into the table tennis market. And they decided to bring out this four-star paddle. But I find it's really just not as seasoned or as like well done as um, these two Stiga paddles here, which have been the table tennis market for a very long time. Still has very nice spin. Not that much of it, but you can still hit it in very well. Very good power, from, in my opinion, as well. Nice control. So as a beginning player or even an intermediate player, this might be the paddle for you. Um, my my choice. I'm trying to not have it as biased, but as 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 it was pretty easy to tell, this is my favorite, and this is why I chose this one, this paddle to uh, play with rather than these two. Um, this one is my favorite because I really like um, how much I can control my spin and how I can return. How I return with my, uh, how I can return, I mean, but, um, yeah, this one's my favorite. And second place I would say gets is this, um, Pro Carbon. Um, I really like this paddle because, um, it has a lot of power. And when, when I, when I, uh, smash, I really like, uh, paddles that hit high power because then I can get, uh, uh, a really a really good smash with a lot of power and even a little bit of spin so it um, hits the hits the table and goes out. So that leaves uh, with both of us choosing as the Diodora for third place. Um, again, uh, this paddle is really good. I'm not saying that it's bad, but it's just not my favorite out of the three. Um, I do like this paddle because I can get. Uh, I can get control and power and spin out of it, but it just doesn't stack up to um, to what these other paddles uh, have in store for people who use them. Okay, perfect. That's, so that's our overall review of the paddles, and now we'll move on to a review of the iPong. Okay, so this is our review of the actual iPong machine. So this is the iPong Pro. 
which is the second top iPod that they sell. It comes in a nice red color, and it's um it's a very 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 good machine. Um, it also has all the features of all the iPods, even the top model, except for the fact that I don't think it has the risers where you can um rise it up. But um it has very heavy top spin. It has a heavy top spin option. It also has a good back spin option, and it um holds a good amount of these Jula two star balls. So um, actually, first we should probably start talking about the balls, just um so you can see how they work. Well, you obviously know how they work, but you can see um, the quality of them. So, would you like to talk about the balls? Uh, yeah, I'll do the balls. Um, these these Jula balls, I really, really like myself. Um, they're not too light, like one stars are. And sometimes, depending on the three star, they're a bit heavy. Mm -hmm. for, so, it's a lot harder for me to return. These ones are a nice middle ground for me because they're not too light, but it's not too hard. Uh, I've, played a, I've played a good few matches with these um, against him and other people. And um, these are really, really nice. We uh, Both players, they don't find difficulty, I don't know, uh, hitting it and saying, oh, it was way too light and they smacked it off the table, or it was way too heavy and it just hit the net. But overall, I really, really enjoy these. Yeah. These are really good uh, two-star balls. I also like the decision by Jula to um, make them an orange color, because I much prefer the orange color over the white color. Also, when I'm playing with these, like, at... Um, at the university or wherever there's table tennis play tables, um, a lot of people think that we're playing with three star balls, even though they're much lighter and much easier to control. They're very, very, very nice mix between the two. So um, this iPod can also hold easily 50 balls, maybe even 60, 70 in this bucket, controllably. We have about 50 in there, and there's still room for I'd say at least 10, 15 more. So um, now we'll actually start talking about the robot itself. So um, I find the oscillation feature is pretty good on the iPod. The middle piece rotates so you can shoot to both sides. It also has a um, very heavy backspin if you want to, and you put on like a full backspin. You're able to really get a sign like right and low over the net, right into the corners. And it's a very good um, example of playing someone who hits a really nice slice in a match. If you want to put on like full topspin, you can um example like you can have an example of a very heavy topspin serve because it, as it will bounce like on their own side. So um, just a tip when you're doing topspin, put on a little bit of backspin so that way it goes over the net. The top spin I find is really great because you can get a really heavy amount of top spin and it really helps with dealing with that type of thing. Frequency, it can shoot them extremely fast, which is perfect, but you can also have it to shoot extremely slow and it doesn't really jam when it's shooting slow either. Okay, would you like to say what you thought of it? Uh, yeah, I really like this. I, before, before uh, he told me, I never even knew these things existed. Um, I really like the features that they have on the remote here. Uh, the frequency can get so it's like pumping them out rapid fire, and it's really nice. Uh, as he said, with uh, the oscillation, it moves back and forth really well. But if you don't have it put in the right place, sometimes it'll go off the table. But that's like not really the machine's fault. Mm -hmm. And having high top spin, uh, having the option to put extreme top spin, extreme top spin, and extreme back spin, uh, really give it so if you're practicing for something and you only have one player it's really nice to have the option of extreme backspin and extreme topspin so you really can um practice for all different re results of people uh, all different types of people who play because there's one, the people who i played in my in my time that i've played ping pong um there's been people who have put a, a lot of backspin on it so i have to lean over the table and these paddles um, are really good and help with um, help with uh, using this robot. That's all for me. And um, one final thing that I have to say that I like to point out is um, as long as you're not getting um, the beginning eye pong, which is I think is the eye pong extreme, which only shoots at a very large arc, and you're not getting the eye pong topspin, which only is plain topspin. This actually has heavy topspin, which is an upgraded level of topspin above this plain topspin that you get in the eye pong topspin. This um, also doesn't take batteries. So it's um, perfect. Even though it's not near as, like, you can't take it around with you, like you could take the iPong topspin, unless you're near an outlet, of course. You could probably find a table tennis table near an outlet. Um, it's much better for that because you don't have to be constantly replacing the batteries, and you can use it for very, very, very long periods of time without having any issue with the battery at all. All you need to do is plug it into an outlet, and it's ready to go. Perfect for practicing one person. Okay, thank you for listening to our full review, and we hope to see you in our next video. Signing off. That's a wrap. That was so cringy. No, it's so cringy, so cringy, so cringy.